All right, uh, a next is finding it in one unit of time. So of course our old equation, y equals 10 times two to the x over five. And so, so we do equals 10 uh, times 2 to the 1 over 5. And that equals a 10, 10 times 1.149. To the x and this is our growth our, our growth um so 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 let's just say we wait, wait one year so 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 how it equal 10 times 1.149 to the one and that would equal Eleven point forty nine dollars after one year. <laughs> All right, All right. So next is doubling the time. It's just like half life. It's just a bit different. So I'm just. Oh, well, funny, I'm, make, I'm making up a quick example. Let's just, let's, let's, let's just say well, we start off with $10. And in a five, and five, and five, and five, five years, It'll double. So, so, oh, your equation is y e is y equals y equals ten times two to the x x x x over 5 so so let's say you wait 3 years you would get y equals 10 times 2 to the to the to that to three over five and 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 basically use the basic math to find out why I mean well I mean to, uh, to get in one unit of time all right, so I'm gonna to talk to you about half-life. And half-life in the book is defined as the time required for a quantity to be reduced by half. So it's an exponential decay function following the form of y equals c times a to the t power. And in this example, we have cesium-137, which has a half-life of 30 years, and we have 100 milligrams of it. So then we know that c, the initial amount, equals 100. And we know that after t 30 years, it's going to reach its half-life, which would be half of 100 would be 50. So we can set up the equation as 50 equals 100 times a to the 30th power. And we need to find what a is. So with this, we can divide each side by 100. And that would give us half equals a to the 30th power. And we can further um, 
uh, I forgot how you call it, raise each side to the 1 over 30th power. And that would give us A equals 1 half to the 1 over 30th power. And we can put this into our equation now. So it will be Y equals 100 times 1 half over t 30th power. And that's how you find the equation given half-life. So now we're going to rewrite the function in terms of one unit of time. So let's say that uh, 100 years has passed. So t would equal 100. You would simply just plug in 100 to the equation. And you would get y equals 100 times 1 half to the power of 100 over 30. And if you further simplify that, that would just equal to approximately 9.9 .9 milligrams. All right, so um, this is the continuous exponential function, which has the form y equals c times e to the kt power, where c equals the initial amount t equals the unit of time that has passed, e equals the natural number that is used in continuous exponential functions, and k equals the continuous growth or decay rate. And it depends on growth or decay. If, if k is greater than zero, then that means that it's growth. And if k is less than zero, it means that that's decay. OK. Um... So we, all, we know that from basic knowledge, exponential function follows y equals ca to the power of t. And because we are working with a continuous exponential function, a is actually e, is e to the power of k, um, which you plug it in, y is c to the e to the k power to the t power. And to figure out if it's a growth function, a would be greater than one, and if it is a decay function, then it is, a is greater than zero, but less than one. Um, we, could, we also know that a is the growth or decay factor, and to find r, which is the growth or decay rate, um, if it is a growth, um, function, then you would have to um, find r by having a subtracted by 1 times 100%, and then you get that, and then decay, for decay, you have to have 1 subtracted by a, and then times it by 100%. Um, we, I guess we're going to do uh, the example on page 139 in the math workbook. Um, the given equation is y equals 0 0.28 billion to the e to the 0 0.111 power and then um, to the t power. So we know that 0 0.28 billion is c and E, the e to the k is actually a, so if you would write that down, it would be a equals e to the 0 0.11. And um, to simplify, that would mean that a is equal to 1.1174. Um, this is also the, the growth factor. So um, to find the growth rate, you would have to follow r equals a subtract 1 times 100%, which would give you um, 1.174 subtract 1, which is uh, 1.74 <laughs> times 100% which would equal to 11.74% growth rate.
Okay, um, so we, are, we know that from basic knowledge, exponential function follows y equals c a to the power of t. And because we are working with a continuous exponential function, a is actually e, is e to the power of k, um, which you plug it in, y is c to the e to the k power to the t power. And to figure out if it's a growth function, a would be greater than 1. And if it is a decay function, then it is a is greater than 0, but less than 1. Um, we, could, we also know that a is the growth or decay factor. And to find r, which is the growth or decay rate, um, if it is a growth um, function, then you would have to um, find r by having a subtracted by 1 times 100%, and then you get that, and then decay, for decay, you have to have 1 subtracted by a, and then times it by 100%. Um, we, I guess we're going to do uh, the example on page 139 in the math workbook. Um, the given equation is y equals 0 0.28 billion to the e to the 0 0.111 power and then um, to the t power. So we know that 0 0.28 billion is c and e, the e to the k is actually a, so if you would write that down it would be a equals e to the 0 0.11 and um, to simplify that would mean that a is equal to 1.1174 um, this is also the, the growth factor so um, to find the growth rate you would have to follow r equals a subtract 1 times 100 percent which would give you um, 1.174 subtract 1 which is uh, 1.74 <laughs> times 100 percent which would equal to 11.74 percent growth rate Okay, so um, this e example is from page 138, and it is given that g of t equals 5,000 times e to the negative 0.04t. Um, in this equation, we know that this, we've, because it's a continuous um, exponential function, we know that this is a and this is c so c would equal to 5000 a would equal to e to the negative 0 0.04 and that comes out to equal to 0 0.9608 which is less than 1 um, this would mean that because this is less than 1 um, if you look up here it says that that is a decay um, this is a, is a decay factor, so it would be, so this is a decay factor, so if you were trying to find the growth, um, no, the, <laughs> this, okay, so, um, if you know that if our decay factor is 0 0.9608. It is a decay factor and not a growth factor because it is less than 1. And because it is less than 1, to, to find the decay rate, um, you would have to follow this formula, which is 1 subtract a times 100%, which would give you 
a subtract 0 0.09608, um, which would times 100%, which would equal to 3.92%. And this is the decay rate, and this is the decay factor. Okay, so um, this e example is from page 138, and it is given that g of t equals 5,000 times e to the negative 0.04t. Um, in this equation, we know that this, we've, because it's a continuous um, exponential function, we know that this is a and this is c, so c would equal to 5,000, a would equal to e to the negative 0 0.04, and that comes out to equal to 0 0.9. 608, which is less than 1. Um, this would mean that because this is less than 1, um, if you look up here, it says that that is a decay. Um, this is a, is a decay factor, so it would be. So this is a decay factor. So if you were trying to find our decay factor is 0 0.9608. It is a decay factor and not a growth factor because it is less than 1. And because it is less than 1, to, to find the decay rate, um, you would have to follow this formula, which is 1 subtract A times 100%, which would give you A subtract 0 0.0. Um, 9608, um, which would times 100%, which would equal to 3.92%. And this is the decay rate, and this is the decay factor.